Um, so good afternoon, everybody. Um, thanks very much for joining us today. And uh, first things first, I need to say happy Celiac Awareness Week 2021. A very, very significant year. Um, second year of this uh, kind of COVID situation. So, um, but hopefully there's light at the end of the tunnel for all of us. So thanks very much for taking the time to join us today. And um, I want to uh, start off by, um, I'll just introduce myself and then I'll tell you who we've got um, on the call with us in terms of speakers. We have a great panel of speakers today. So my name is Eileen Markey. I'm the founder and owner of a company called Unglued. Um, Unglued is a dedicated gluten-free food business and we have our own range of gluten-free products. So we have sauces, we have seasoning, we have um, different baking mixes and things like that. Um, I'm actually a celiac myself. I uh, was diagnosed about seven years ago, so I know only too well uh, what it's like um, to, to live on a restricted gluten-free diet. Um, and that's why I'm, I'm just thrilled to be joined by some of our amazing guests and speakers today. So first of all, I'd like to welcome Jill Brennan. Jill is the uh, CEO of the Celiac Society of Ireland. Um, and I know Jill also as well, while she's not a celiac, she does actually live on a restricted gluten-free diet because she has a gluten sensitivity. So she can also relate um, very well to some of the challenges that come with that. I'd like to also introduce you to Pauline Clark. Pauline is the founder and the owner of a fantastic business called Cookie. Um, and they make um, wonderful cookie mixes, which um, you can actually see in a lot of stores, especially Super Value and different online stores and platforms around the country. We're also joined today um, by Kevin. Kevin is the founder and the owner of a company called The Merry Mill. And they produce um, a range of gluten-free oat-based products. So they grow and harvest all the oats themselves. And they have beautiful oat flowers and an amazing, very high quality range of products. Um, before uh, we jump into some of the questions for the panel, I also want to say a huge thanks to my Caboose store who set up and organized um, this uh, uh, Zoom chat today. My Caboose store is um, an online artisan food store um, that has an incredible um, array of products. And actually, they have a separate uh, free from section with over 100 gluten free products um, uh, on, online. So, um, Unglued uh, is one of the producers that they stock, also Cookie and the Merry Mills. So, we're delighted um, that they offered to set this up today. So, uh, thank you guys. Thanks to Kingsley and Kira for organizing this. Um, I should also mention as well, before I go any further, that we are very proud to say we have a very strong kind of loud made presence here today. So my Caboose store is set um, uh, in County Louth. We've got myself from County Louth and Pauline, uh, and then we have Kevin from um, from me, so um, Jill, you're, you, you know, we'll, we'll acknowledge you as an honorary member 
of the Loud Maid uh, group today. Well, so I couldn't thank possibly, you. I, I appreciate the offer, Aileen. <laughs> I mean, as a national association, I couldn't be seen to be given preferences to certain counties now, could I? <laughs> Yeah, but you're you're here to represent the rest of the nation. Yeah. But listen, <laughs> um, let's get on with the questions. And Jill, I'd love to start with you. Um, and I know it's a really big week for you guys, Celiac Awareness Week. Um, and it looks like the focus this year for you guys has been very much on kind of mental health. Yeah. Um, so can you talk a little bit about that and what, what was the, what kind of prompted you, I guess, to kind of focus on that particular theme this year? Um, thanks again, Aileen, for having us on and thanks again to Mike Booster, to uh, the team there. Mm. Um, what it prompted us for this year? Well, I guess it came out of a couple of areas. Um, the first being that last year, 2020, was meant to be our Golden Jubilee year. The society was founded in 1970. We were turning 50 uh, in 2020, and we had great plans to uh, really mark that and to have great celebrations. But then this little tiny little virus came out of uh, the, 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 the eastern part of the world, and all of a sudden we were uh, engulfed in a pandemic. So um, for, uh, for us, it was a case of, well, how do we now uh, support our members, continue to support our members as a remote community? And the it became very uh, clear to us that um, while we were there to support our, you know, our long-term members, um, we saw that there was, um, we felt a, a drop in, in, in new members reaching out because of the lack of, of areas to get diagnosed, um, didn't know what to do, where to get food, what, what to do, all that kind of stuff. Um, so that was one reason why, as of course, as the year progressed and everybody was getting more, um, I suppose, uh, confined to lockdowns and, and restrictions. Um, we reckon that that had to be acknowledged in some way, shape or form um, with this year's Awareness Week. It also then stemmed back to, um, I suppose, evidence that we've been hearing from people when they were first diagnosed as well, how lonely it was um, and how they didn't know where to turn. Um, and how, while yes, they had support from the society, they felt that um, they had nowhere to turn for, for within their own their own groups, their own social social groups. Um, so that was, I suppose, the second reason. And then the third reason was it was a personal reason, um, because I before I was diagnosed with non-celiac gluten sensitivity, um, I had gotten to the stage where I was terrified to put anything in my mouth because I didn't actually know what was going to make me sick and what was going to what was going to affect me. Um, uh, I. It was, it was causing a huge amount of brain fog. It was ca causing a huge amount of fatigue because I wasn't eating properly because I was terrified to eat. Um, and this was something that when I was speaking about it with the, our in-house dietitian, Sarah Kyo, that she went, well, that's something that's experienced by most people when they're diagnosed or before they're diagnosed initially. They don't know what's going on. And mm -hmm. as Mary Borton, um, our counselling psychologist who was on, we had a seminar with her yesterday afternoon at one o'clock and she was saying, um, when you're not well physically, you're mentally not well either. So we thought um, we had put in place the whole um, support with the dietitian mm -hmm. and the nutritionist and the, and the chef in the society, that um, now it was time to look at the mental health and the mental well-being element uh, so we could give a full wraparound service. So that's where the ideas really came for Awareness Week this year. Right. And you mentioned there that you know, you yourself um, suffer from non-celiac gluten sensitivity. What, what are some of the challenges that you personally face trying to follow, you know, a, a gluten-free diet? Um, it's difficult because you, gluten is everywhere. It's ubiquitous. Mm. Um, and I make a huge effort to try very hard to stick to my gluten-free diet. Now, the, the, I suppose the difference between what I have and, and celiac disease is the fact that there's no currently no evidence, no medical evidence to say that I'm actually damaging any part of my system. Um, I would argue that I am I'm damaging my mental health by the fact that I'm feeling pretty crap if I eat something that has gluten in it. Um, I'm also fructose intolerant. So that just leads to a higher level of, you know, you have to now look at labels very carefully in relation to what you're putting into your system. Um, 
knowing that there's a fantastic range of gluten-free foods out there now is a huge, um, it's a huge uh, support and it's a huge benefit because, I mean, if you look at our food list app, um, our food book alone last year had almost 7,000 items in it. Um, 7,000 7, items that had been certified gluten-free, both from a laboratory perspective with regard to the less than 20 parts per million in the product, but also in a production perspective, so that if there was no risk of cross-contamination in the production uh, uh, process. So um, being able to now have that list on my phone when I go out, mm. being able to scan a barcode, and know that it, it it has it if it comes up back saying that this is a product it has been certified gluten free by both the society and the FSAI. That if there's not a, if there are new products that I see in the supermarket that I want the society to know about, I can actually upload it from the app as well. And um, for me, it's about the variety of foods now that are out there. But having said that, an awful lot of supermarkets still don't stock. A huge range they tend to focus very much on their own brands and that's great and that's fantastic and everything but i like to be able to go into the likes of the soup any of the supermarkets in the country and that i can see a cookie or i can see an unglued or i can see a merry mill but that all has to come down to the retailers playing their part as well about you know offering shelf space at reasonable rates to uh, to these small producers so that they can get out in front of a, a, a wider audience a wider target market what we want to do as part of this is uh, of our strategic plan going forward for the next three years is to work with food producers like yourselves and food manufacturers to uh, in to to highlight the nutritional element that's in these products now because in the past gluten free foods have been focused on you know taste and texture meaning that they're high in carbohydrates and they're high in so they're high in sugars and high in fats and what we want to do is say that they're out there at the moment there are really good gluten free products that are not high in fats and high in sugars and taste just as good, if not better than products that have gluten in them. So that's one of our objectives for the coming year. Okay. So you touched on the food up there and um, congratulations to you and the team because you just launched the new celiac food app last night. Is that correct? Yes. Well, it, it depends. It, this week for everything, let's put it that way. Um, the app stores, the technical bits behind it are the app stores. They you lo- you put it up in the store. It's reviewed. It's then it's then certified okay by Google or Apple. Um, Apple we thought would take forever. Apple basically certified within 12 hours so it was available for apple users on iphone and ipad um, on tuesday morning and then yesterday afternoon it went live in the google app store so and mm-hmm. uh, the google play store so now it's everywhere and um, we're delighted about that and um, it's a really huge uh, step for the society one of the uh, things that i took um i basically said took an executive decision on last may was we needed to up our digital and our, our, our online offering to our members um, because uh, we just weren't getting out to, to, the, to, the, to a huge audience out there, which is the, the 30s to 50s, because we didn't have what everybody has, a, a phone, an app. Um, the book was becoming unwieldy. I mean, it was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and it meant that we had to make um, some hard decisions in relation to what was actually being included in it. So for example, one ingredient products, if they, we knew that they were definitely gluten-free, we had to take them out of the book. Things like mm-hmm. milk and cheese and butter. And that caused a lot of confusion because mm-hmm. um, you know, people say, okay, well, I know milk comes from a cow, but what about the processing of the milk? Is there any chance of the cross-contamination in that? So they were hard decisions we had to make, but with the app, we don't have to make those decisions. Everything can be in it, you know? Okay. And um, can anybody access the app or do you have to be a member? And if so, how does someone become a member? That's very great question, Aileen, and thank you very much for mm-hmm. asking it. Uh, you can, everybody can download the app, but you can only access the food list and the recipes if you're a member of the society. And you can actually join directly from uh, the app if you're not a member, or you can go on to the, our celiac.ie website and you can join their membership is only 35 euros for the year as an individual. And you can have the app across five devices. So, I mean, seriously go on a line join and that money will be put into making that app even better because this is only phase one of the app 
Phase one is all focused on the food list and the shopping list and the recipes. Phase yeah. two is going to be focused <clears> on <throat> eating out, gluten-free trails, and phase three then on medical and uh, not uh, information that you can bring to your doctor or your GP. Great, fab. Thanks, Jill. Um, I'll come back to you again if you're okay to stay with us for a little bit. No problem, bit can do. Longer. Great. So, um, Pauline, can I jump over to you? Um, uh, would you mind just because actually I think the story around how you uh, set up Cookie and why you set up Cookie is, is really interesting. So would you mind sharing that with the group? Yeah, no problem at all. Um, so my sort of journey with the whole business started 10 years ago at this stage. Um, I was working, I've worked in the food industry. I was a buyer, so I had a good knowledge of food production from sort of my background. But um, I had my first child, um, I had a second child, I think there was a third one on the way. And um, my oldest boy was diagnosed with autism. And basically I was sort of told essentially, really he needed a full-time care and I would have to give up work. So um, I gave up work. He, he actually turned 19 last week, so it's, it's quite a while at this stage, but I gave up work at the time and really and truly I didn't, um, I didn't like being out of work and let's be honest with you, I, I always liked to work. The first two years I found really tough getting him to integrate, getting him to do anything with the other siblings, so I was now with three small children and I found he was struggling at school and, you know, with a lot of stuff. So we started baking. My dad was always loved to cook. He taught me how to bake and we started baking cookies, something he could get his hands into, something that from a touch perspective and sensory perspective, he would touch. And every Saturday morning, the three children sat around and we made cookies and we gave them away. We, we just give them to everybody because we had so many at this stage, but it got him involved with everyone in the house and, sort of over time I realized maybe this is something that other families might enjoy this whole process of bringing the children together and you know letting them enjoy something they learn a skill they have to wait their time they get to the dexterity and the touching aspect of it and the fine motor skills and also they get to eat them and then share the experience with their own nanny granda you know neighbors whoever they can find on the street um so really what happened was I started making the, I sort of started looking back into the idea of running the business, came up with the idea, started making cookies and got in contact with a local restaurant, coffee shop. They took a few and it started to get a little bit of progression. Um, and then we started getting feedback from the people who were buying them saying, where can we get them ourselves? Where can we make them ourselves? And this sort of drove the idea of the dry bacon home cookie mix. And in the meantime, what had happened was I had met other parents of autistic children and we're in Ireland, we're, we're not big on medicating children. We're not big on, you know, we like to look at other sort of alternatives. And a big thing that came out was diet and how a gluten-free diet can affect the child's ability to communicate, to be more alert and how that gluten can dampen down and dull that sensation, almost like eating their Christmas dinner every day, if you sort of, for an analogy. And this was more evident, the more people I spoke to. Um, so we did a little bit of research and we found that everybody wanted, they still wanted the treats. They still wanted to give this experience to the kids. So I started looking into the gluten-free aspect. Um, I got in contact with everybody I knew, anybody who was gluten-free, we bought every sample going in Ireland that we could. And I researched how to do it, how to get certified and what I needed to do to make sure I was giving out the, uh, the right product and keeping everybody safe. Um, and we developed gluten-free flavors. To me, it was very much aimed at that special needs idea. Mm -hmm. um, but the feedback we have started getting going, my child can now go to birthday parties and they can bring their cookies or they can make their own giant cookie for their birthday. And we've got some just wonderful feedback from our customers. And we've always maintained the same price, whether it's standard product, gluten-free product, we've never ever discriminated. Um, and now years on, I actually have four children. I have three of them are autistic. They've, we just had two more diagnosed last year. And um, they all have additional needs, but, um, we, we have three autistic ourselves and I find that once the anxiety builds, their gut is where the, the problem comes immediately. Mm -hmm. It seems to hit them. So especially the 19 year old, we've gone through 2020 mm -hmm. and college. So I always look and change him 
we're constantly trying to move him fully into sort of gluten-free celiac diet, but it makes an absolute huge difference to his performance and his quality of life, in my opinion. Yeah, that's amazing. And um, <clears throat> obviously, we know your your products are available on my Kaboo store, but <clears throat> you're also available in lots of different super value stores around the country too is that right yes we were mm. part of the original food academy family six mm. years ago and mm. we went into about 60 super values and actually from next week we should be um, we've got a new distributor and we're going mm. to start getting into more nationwide super value stores around the country and um, so that's really looking forward to that and last year we saw um we got three contracts with aldi and we got into aldi nationwide last year um and we mm. are launching a brand new gluten-free, just happens to be a brand new gluten-free cookie mix. Um, Excellent. Yeah, we're really, really excited. We've put a lot of work into it. Mm. We're fully certified, waiting on our packaging. Um, unfortunately, my tongue is tied. I can't say where it's going. Oh, when, damn. But next week, we can announce okay. it next week. Um, so just watch our social media mm. and we will yeah. tell you where it is. Yeah, great. Well, I, I personally, I love the cookie products because um, they're actually really versatile because I think from following you on Instagram, I, I learned that actually I could use the cookie mix also as like a cake loaf mix and yeah. stuff as well. So, um, no, it's, it's a fantastic product. So we'll be excited to hear about the new product coming out next week. Thank you, Ellen. It's meant to be fun. They're cookies. We're not yeah. meant to be serious. <clears throat> and, yeah, you know, exactly. To say that, you know, being a celiac, you know, it's, it's, you're still entitled to have something fun, nice, bright packaging, you know, something <clears throat> that captures people. And we really aim to do that. Yeah, great. So, um, Kevin, if I could switch over to you, um, the, the Merry Mill, um, all, all of your products are oat-based, is that right? And they're all gluten-free oats. Have I got that correct? You have that correct. And we are the only certified organic gluten-free oat milk. Okay. So, so that was really important for us. And from the start of the journey, when I set up the mill, I was just going to do organic oats. And then two of my nieces were diagnosed with celiac disease. And they were saying they couldn't find an Irish organic mm. gluten-free oat. So that put me on that journey. That was a huge lot of work. Mm. Only, I was a, I was a learning curve as I went. In hindsight, I had to know as much before I started. I may not have went down the gluten-free line. There's that <laughs> much complications. Like I'd invest huge money, use all our own equipment. We built a purpose-built mill on the farm. So it's a fully sealed operation. Like we grow it on the farm, harvest it, bring it into our mill, mill it, pack it before we send it out. So it, it was a big cost in setting up, but it has worked out really well for us as it happened. It was a great mm. investment and it was great we went down the gluten-free line because it gave us a real niche in the market. Yeah. And um, what about, um, like, obviously we've, all of us, you know, personally, professionally, business-wise, everyone has been impacted by the, the pandemic in some, you know, shape or form. Um, what, if any, kind of impact did it have on your business? And was there anything that you had to change um, over the course of the last year to respond to that? Yeah, no, it had a really positive impact in our business. Like, it was definitely... Uh pandemic for us it our sales have doubled if not tripled so expansion is the challenge building on getting the capacity we're struggling to keep up with orders there's been a huge awakening in the value of quality in food so that's mm -hmm. been really good and it's like what Jill was talking about mental health and the link with mental health and really high nutritional value food and it's been a huge swing to organic as well, chemical free. Like we use no chemicals at any stage of our production. So it's as clean a product as you could get. And then it's very nutrient dense because when it's grown, the grain has no added chemical to protect it against disease. So it has to use its own defense mechanism to protect itself. So then when you eat this product, you're eating that reinforced grain who has used its own 
and defenses to fight off any diseases. So there's been a big awakening for that, for nutritional value in food, not just food, but what's really in your food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been great for us because of that. Yeah, that's great news. And you mentioned there that, you know, for for you guys, um, you know, actually there's, there's, it sounds like a lot involved in kind of, the farming growing of like pure gluten-free oats. And um, we hear a lot about um, kind of ancient grains and things like that becoming more popular now, or we need to go back to that way of kind of farming and harvesting. It, it, do you have like any thoughts on that? Like why, you know, why there isn't more of the type of farming that you're doing to produce this kind of higher quality product. Yeah, it's, it's hard to understand why there's not more because the demand is there. Like we export mm-hmm. to the States, we're exporting to all around Europe now because there's demand for people going the extra step. And we, we go a lot of extra steps. Like we walk it, the family walks the field while growing to check for road grains. And we're testing below five parts per million because some of the contracts we have, they demand we sell below five parts per million. The test can't get any lower than that. So we're going after the premium, premium market where there's real quality in the product. And there's great opportunities there for other people in this market. You know, we yeah. are expensive. We're not, we're not a cheap product, but the quality is there. So when you add everything up, we're actually very reasonably priced when you put in the whole health benefit of eating a product like ours. Yeah. And I've assumed there's been a lack of marketing in this area. You see very little marketing in the organic sector. There's no budget there for marketing. And so there's been a challenge and educating the consumer. So I think the pandemic has been a real help because people have time in their hands to research where their food's coming from. And that's been a real addition to us anyway. Yeah. Now, I see you have a couple of, looks like a couple of your products there behind you. Can you yeah. show those to us, what you have? Yeah, I have, <clears throat> I have a pancake mix here. So that, that's a real fine flour. It makes a beautiful pancake. Just add milk and an egg, and away you go. You have pancake for breakfast. Mm-hmm. And then this is our main, that's our core product. That's our, our porridge. That's definitely our, our best seller really good product so this and this is cold milled which is a huge difference as well so most mills they use steam and they heat it so you have all the oils and natural oils and that are still intact in this so this is a really good product you know and especially anyone who's diabetic as well it's very low on the glycemic index so you're ticking both boxes both celiac and diabetic you know so that's a really good product mm-hmm. and we have our old flour that's that's just standard flour. So works really well as well. So yeah, no, we're, yeah. we're going well. And then we have our overnight oats. So this is um, chia, linseed and sunflower seeds with our porridge, a mix. And that's really good. You just leave it in the milk or in the yogurt overnight, eat it cold then the next morning. So cold's a really good way actually to eat your porridge because you have all the live enzymes are still intact when you eat cold. Like when you cook it, you're killing some of the nutritional value. So that's a cold yeah. digested product, which is really good for your gut health, which is so important for in, in the celiac world because that, that's what's been affected is the gut health. So our product, we've got great feedback. Now, nutritionists in the UK and nutritionists in Ireland now using our products on, with their patients and getting great results from it. Yeah. It'd be a real boost because it's a, it's a live product ours it hasn't been mm-hmm. like the steam it is like a form of pasteurization so ours is a raw product yeah it's- and that that would be really good for as you say for people with celiac disease or if their guts impacted by gluten intolerance because it would help with things like brain fog and stuff like that as well i guess yeah no it have it's a huge benefit there and there's a real interest in starch. There's three different starches in porridge. So you have the fast acting starch, which is about six, 7%. And then you have the slow acting starch, which is 24, where the gym people use that for exercise. And then you have a, another interest and it's called a resistant starch. And that's the one that feeds the bacteria in your gut. Mm-hmm. And 
that's huge. There's a lot of surveys and that done on this and testing into it. And when you're talking about mental health and your gut flora and makes a huge difference having that up at the right level. So yeah. there's great tests done in that area. Yeah, great. Um, thanks, Kevin. Pauline, can I come back to you for a second? Um, you know, obviously, Kevin talked a little bit there about the kind of the impact of the pandemic on his business. Um, and actually, it's been really great for his business, sounds like. What about for, for you guys, for Cookie? Well, I mean, home bacon turned out to be the big hero, didn't it, of 2020. It absolutely soared. We saw our sales triple, if not quadruple, easily in stores. Um, huge demand for people who are staying at home, looking for activities to do for themselves, looking for treats for the kids. We have... Um, because most of our, so the two, the two gluten-free, the two main gluten-free, that's, um, so that's the oatmeal and chocolate one that we mm -hmm. do. This mm. is the double chocolate. So both of those are actually certified. You obviously, you can add your egg and butter, but if needed, they can be um, dairy-free. So mm. you can actually put your dairy alternative into both of them. We have both of them certified um, by the HSE to say that the chocolate and everything has been checked and it can be, it's all dairy-free. And then also, as with most products, you can put in an egg replacement too. So we actually can hit the vegan area with our gluten-free products that are at these two gluten-free products that are out there. And that has proven um, a huge advantage as well, because again, a lot of people are stuck at home. They aren't able to get out and get all the ingredients they need. But home baking has, it, it's just phenomenal how fantastic for us which is you know and I know it's really been tough we've been stuck at home we're the same I have still have children at home at college and you know working from here but business wise it actually was a huge boost we never stopped we kept working the whole way through yeah that's fantastic and um, and Jill you know from a society perspective you know you mentioned like last year was was the jubilee year so well, obviously covid you know had a big impact on that and um, what were kind of the other kind of impacts either positive or negative for you and the team because uh, i assume you were all you've all been working remotely and working from home and stuff yeah we all had to move home um basically uh from when was it, the 12th of March last year. Unfortunately, I was um, out um, sick with the, uh, from the society for four weeks in March of last year. So um, I have to say fair play to the team. They, they basically, they fleeced the office and moved home, which is what mm -hmm. they had to do. Um, but um, when I started, when I was ready to go to come back to work again in April of last year, it was um it was tough it was tough to know you know how if we could continue the services that we actually um were, were, were providing for our members so um we focused very much on what we could do um communication wise digitally and um, we focused very much on the information that we could get out um, over social media etc um unfortunately we saw a, a, a drop in membership um and i think that had uh, to do with People were looking now at, um, you know, the, the, the euros in their pocket and whether or not, the, you know, they felt it was worth paying money for, for a membership with the society. So we saw a drop in membership, but that even pushed us more to focus on delivering um, our services via uh, as much as we possibly could, could via digitally. So that, I suppose... The silver lining there was the app came out of that because we realized we needed to 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 support members um in a, in a digital capacity on on the on the on the phone um we did see a few of our cross grain license um uh, licenses fall off uh, cross grain license is a symbol that's recognized uh, now globally and um, not just in ireland and, and europe um that basically when a celiac sees that on the packaging they know that it's safe for them to eat it's the it's the highest it's the basically the gold standard uh, when it comes to to gluten-free and um, we saw some of those fall off because unfortunately um the, the businesses just didn't didn't um didn't renew mm -hmm. um, they didn't see a, they didn't see a value 
the value in it is the fact that this is now a globally recognized trademark across the world in relation to gluten-free products. Um, I would encourage anybody who is in the gluten-free uh, space, uh, food manufacturing space, to consider it because that's the one thing um, that is has been is sort of is is backed by the brc as well so the british retail consortium and um that standard their gluten-free standard so and it's it's distributed through the association of european celiac societies and then through ourselves as a member of, of that uh, umbrella group um it was a it was a good year alien because it, it brought the team really tight and really made us um uh, brought us together really well we're we we home now like a well-oiled machine thank god um, mm -hmm. nearly as good i say as one of kevin's mills down there i'd say we're all we're running well <laughs> um, and as for uh, the membership i think what we have proven is that if we can weather 2020 and 2021 and um, that we are and still standing um, and new and improved that we can certainly support our members come rain, hail or shine or pandemic in the future. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, I would say your app is a great move, hmm. personally, like because our digital, our digital sales, like that's where all most of our games were made online. That's where everyone's living at the moment. So it's great to see you moving and taking a good foothold in that sector. You know, that, yeah. Oh, I'm sure we could do something for you, Kevin. I'm sure we could. We could definitely <laughs> involve you somewhere along the line. That goes for you too, Pauline, and for you, Aileen, as well. There's always opportunities I'm looking for. Yeah, yes. it's, it's, it's definitely it's the right. Sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. Now um, we have we have got some questions coming in. Um, I'm just conscious of time, but before we jump over to the Q and A, um. Uh, this is a question for each of you. Um, maybe you could share with the group kind of one sort of one thing uh, you've got planned, um, something kind of new or any kind of new initiatives. Pauline, I know you have your your new product coming out, but is there anything else you would like to share with the group? And um, before we jump over to the Q and A, so maybe Kevin, we can start with you. Anything new from the Merry Metal coming down the track? Yeah, we've been working as sort of on going on and off. At the very start of the pandemic, things slowed down for the first two weeks. And we've been working on an organic gluten for oat mill for over a year now. And I was thinking to myself, right, here's an opportunity now. Things are going to get quiet and we'll push on this. But that actually didn't happen. Things just skyrocketed so but we are we're still working when we get a chance so hopefully again the end of the year we'll have that on the market so that'd be okay. a nice achievement for us so that's that's going to be your new product that's our new, new product, product. Yeah. yeah okay um pauline what about you you mentioned your new gluten-free product coming but anything else any other kind of trade secrets you'd like to reveal <laughs> Well, we um, so we're going to have a new premises. Very well, we have the premises where, with like Kevin, there takes time to get these things set up. Um, it's for growth, cause so we're getting so big that we're um, going to be doing our own production, and it also gives us the opportunity, hopefully, to do some um, sort of in-house production for other people if they want blends done or if they want mixes done. We have the capability to do that, um, and you know, possibly doing own sort of own brand for some of the major retailers would be fantastic as well so the sort of setting up the premises will give us the chance to grow the range and grow what we do and um, we're also provide a product at the minute now we, they've only taken a sample of the gluten-free it's been standard up till then um, into an ice cream company and um, we've been working with them sort of for the last nine months which has you know shot up as well and we're hoping that they'll start having a gluten-free uh, range of the cookies which will be baked and prepared that they can start offering their customers. So, and they'll have gluten-free ice cream as well. So we're working with them and they're about to open up two new branches, three new branches. So that's really positive. Fantastic. Yeah, so it's um, bringing it out to the masses is the plan. Yeah. And Jill, what about the Help you get that message out. How do we get that? We use you, Jill. You can share all these details. <laughs> Absolutely. They're all finalized. No bother. <laughs> Thank you. Jill, what about the society? Anything else you'd like to share about what's coming down the track? 
oh Aileen I've so many things that I'm planning <laughs> it's just money is always the issue behind all of this um but really um we in June we have a campaign launching around uh, dietetic clinics um, and I would urge anybody who has been diagnosed with celiac disease uh, to see a dietitian uh, once a year and to get their bloods done once a year but we have a, a campaign uh, something kind of exciting we feel happening around that in June. Uh, in July, then, we are hoping to um, work with other producers and other manufacturers to try and get more information to our members about the, the variety of products that are currently out there at present. And, of course, we will be doing our 10,000 walks, our 10,000 steps, our 10,000 or is it 10,000 kilometres, it must be, yeah, uh, for the mini marathon that was supposed to happen in June. We'll be definitely doing walking for, uh, for celiac awareness and gluten-free uh, in July as well. Um, who knows? We might decide we'll walk between every place in Louth and Mead that have, uh, you know, <laughs> gluten-free producers. Um, I, have a, I have a ton of ideas that I think we could be doing and I'm providing a better wraparound service for people who are, um, have to live a gluten-free life. Um, it's all part of our mission to make Ireland the best country in the world to live gluten-free. And I don't see any reason why we can't achieve that with such fantastic producers from a food perspective, the likes of Kevin, the likes of Pauline, the likes of yourself. Um, you know, we, ha we live in a food island. There is no reason at all why we cannot make this the best country in the world to live gluten-free. And to attract people into the country again, to go on gluten-free trails, um, you know, with guys and and, uh, and through the app as to where they can eat safely and where they can enjoy their time while they're visiting here. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, now, with that in mind, uh, so we do have a couple of questions up here, but I do want to just remind everybody on the call, in case you didn't know already, that my Kabo store um, I think I mentioned at the beginning, they've over 100 gluten-free products in their range. They're actually offering 10% off all gluten-free products this week um, in celebration and recognition of Celiac Awareness Week. So thank you guys for, for that great offer. So that's just something to remind everybody. I'll get that on the social media team on that immediately. Great. Thanks, Jill. Now, we do um, have some questions that I think you responded to a couple of them, Jill, about the app there. But um, Janice uh, put up a comment here to say she's in Northern Ireland. She used to be a member of Celiac UK, found it was more UK based. She's asking, do you think Celiac Society of Ireland would be better for Northern Ireland inclusion? Janice, we'd be delighted to have you as a member. Absolutely <laughs> delighted to have you as a member. Um, I will, we definitely help support you in any way we can. Um, you know, we're, we're an all our, our island um, uh, society as far as I'm concerned. We do do um, some collaboration with Celiac UK. From a retail perspective, given the variety of, I suppose, um, retail stores, the likes of the Asdas and that sort of thing that would be in Northern Ireland, I would suggest that you um, get the digital um, membership with Celiac UK just so you could still use their app for shopping in the, the UK centric uh, supermarkets. But for everything else, I mean, we'd be happy to help you out in any way, shape or form that we can. Just go on to celiac.ie, mm -hmm. check out um, the, web, the page, the web page. And um, if you feel mm -hmm. membership is something that you would benefit from, we know we'd be there to support you, whatever we can. Um, by all means, join up. Great, thanks, Jill. No problem. Um, thanks, Janice, for the question. Um, any other questions here for the panel? Please um, send them through. Jill, um, another question for you that hasn't come up here, but I think we might have a couple of other um, producers on here, actually. So I guess um, we kind of, you touched on that a bit, but if I'm a producer and I want to be listed with the Celiac Society, how do I go about doing that? Oh, very simple goal. First of all, you can check out our website. Like I said, we do have a section there for food producers and food manufacturers. But the best thing to do is to email us. And we have a dedicated email for producers who would like to get included in the food list 
uh, database um, for both the app and the printed version. Um, and that's foodlist at celiac.ie. That's foodlist, all, all one word, at celiac.ie. Now we have um, a great food and nutrition team. Um, it's made up of Frances Buckley, who's a chef and she's our technical food, our food technical expert. Um, she um, has worked in both cross retail and catering for the last nearly 30 years. So she's very experienced in relation to what your needs might be as producers. We also have Sarah Kyo, the dietitian. She'll definitely be able to, to support uh, Francis. And then we have our research nutritionist, Sarah Kiernan. And again, those three girls are literally red hot when it comes to food manufacturing and food production and foods that are uh, uh, that we would like to get out to our members there. So food list at celiac.ie. It's free to be listed in the app. It's free to be listed in our database for now. <laughs> but so get in there quick while the strike while the iron's hot the gluten the cross grain uh, trademark which i mentioned earlier there is a license fee for that but if i'm not mistaken i'm almost certain the annual license fee for that is as low as 500 euros so i think it's money well spent it means that your product is then very much a case that we educate <laughs> all of our members on this once you see that cross grain symbol on the packaging you put your hand on it you don't even have to look at the label you don't even have to look at the app you don't even have to look at the food list you just pick it up off the shelf and, and put it in, in in the basket of the trolley so i think it's really something that is worthwhile investigating for your products just to it gives you that extra stamp and seal of approval it's the gold standard when it comes to gluten-free foods great thanks jill um i don't see any other questions coming through there at the moment um Kevin, I have a, a quick one for you. Um, I, I noticed on your website, I think I mentioned to you in the beginning, so you've got your own coffee. Now you've got Mary Mill coffee. Yeah. So this, this could be the perfect coffee, virtual coffee morning right here. You bring the coffee, Pauline brings the cookies. Yeah. That's a brilliant I idea, Aileen. Why didn't we think of this coffee. sooner? <laughs> I know. Yeah, we should have we should have got our act yeah. together on that one. But what's what's the story behind the coffee? Yeah, so the, the coffee it's as I say it's a friend of mine who brought in a quite a lot of organic coffee before the pandemic, and then his whole market for that dried up. And I had a chat with him, and I said, "Look, at, if you roast for us, we'll brand it and try it through our site." On our brand and it's worked really well and it's, it's really good quality organic coffee and it's going great on our site so mm. is that and i'm not sure about is there a gluten-free thing around coffee is more well coffee i presume is gluten-free so i can't imagine anyone roasting in a non-gluten-free environment but i hadn't even actually looked into the gluten-free <laughs> side of it because i presume it is that be right jill to the best of my knowledge, Kevin, it is that coffee is considered gluten free. But again, it's all about the production side of things. And this is like one of the reasons why the food list that we have put together and that we are the database that we have collated. Uh, we actually get um, everybody who wants to be listed in the database to sign a declaration stating, yes, they have their gluten free cert. And as we know, gluten free certs are valid for three years once the testing has been done. But it also is a legal declaration stating that the product has been produced in a non-gluten contaminated environment. So in other words, it's a gluten-free environment that the product has been produced in. So there's the two elements to get into our data, to get into the database. You have to have certs that we call on you and say, have you got your certs? You can pull them out and show them to us immediately. But also that you've signed this legal declaration that states the product has been, has been produced in a gluten-free environment. So yes, while coffee is, to answer your question, gluten-free uh, naturally, it's the processing side of things that we are very yeah. focused on that's where our members want that extra security that extra level of certainty that they are not going to be um glutened in any way shape, so, or so it's a lab test then jill put it throw it into the lab test the same as we do with all our other products Absolutely. Just, mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. then you could yeah, it's very it straightforward in fact we actually have um we actually have an arrangement one of the the, the labs and um, where we can actually get you a discount so um i think i think it's only 75 euros uh, per product, if not if not less. So, I mean, if you have any queries on that, again, foodlist at celiac.ie um, and the team there will be able to help you out, no problem at all. Great. Very good, yeah. Now, a question just popped up here about, um, <clears throat> someone was asking for good resources for finding gluten-free recipe ideas. 
Um, so I'll, I, Celiac Society of Ireland have an amazing collection of um, gluten-free recipes. Um, I would also encourage everybody to follow the Merry Mill, follow Cookie, follow myself on Glued and the Celiac Society, um, both on Instagram and Facebook, because um, we all share recipes and different recipe ideas from time to time. And um, just to give on Glued a shameless plug, um, we've actually got a free um, kind of baking tutorial going out next week. So if anyone would like the link and information on that, you can uh, you can drop me a message. Um, but every, all of the panel who are here today um, have, you know, have all have kind of recipe ideas on their website. But I know, Jill, you must have a huge bank of recipes now on the Celiac Society website. We had a lot of recipes and then Francis joined the team, our chef, and now we have like gazillions. It's brilliant. And <laughs> um, we're actually going to be working on as well and um, towards, I suppose, the next uh, academic year. We're going to be working around, uh, you know, students eating on a budget and recipes for students eating on a budget um, and where they can get their products and that kind of thing. So, again, I would urge <laughs> anybody who has an online presence or an online store, you know, think about the students who are going to be leaving home celiac students who will be fledging from the nest so to speak um, and they need to know how to um, cater for themselves safely um, uh, away from 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 the, the nurturing arms of mommy and daddy um, and making sure that they have access to the same I suppose range of foods that those of us who are in the working world have, ha have access to because we've got the money in our pockets it would be great to see small producers I know how uh, important it is to have a margin but that you can cater for these groups as well because you know that is of concern to a lot of parents when the when the kids leave the leave the leave the nest and they're going to be taking care of themselves now in college. Are they going to be feeding themselves right? Are they going to be making sure they're not getting glutened? Or, and we're hoping to, we're going to do work on that to support children or support teenagers as they move out of home. But it would be great to see the food industry getting behind that as well um, to, to, you know, to pr pr provide the products and the foods at a reasonable rate so that students actually have good variety and the good nutritional uh, content in their diets as well. Yeah, great, fantastic. So um, on that note, I don't, I don't see any other questions coming in. Um, I, I'll kind of wrap it there, but I, before we go, I want to say a huge thank you to our panel of guest speakers. So big thanks to Jill and Kevin and Pauline for joining us. Um, and again, huge thanks to the My Caboose team, to Kingsley and Kira for setting up this event. Really, really appreciate it. And don't forget the My Caboose store, this offer 10% off to celebrate Celiac Awareness Week. And um, we will, we are recording the event today, so we'll get that out to everybody afterwards so you can share with your friends and family. I hope you guys really enjoyed the chat. Thanks I really did. Thank you. And Thanks, really, Thank you. Have, have a great and safe rest of the week and um, make the most of all the fabulous offers that are out there right now. It's like uh, Christmas for you, Steely Hats. So. Uh, thanks, everybody, and uh, we'll chat to you soon. Thanks a million, guys. Hey, Great to see you all. Bye-bye. Get in touch anytime.